Hey guys, it's Nico Mantua, and for those who don't know, I just got back from the Philippines. I was there for a month and a week. I haven't been back home for two years. That means I haven't seen my father, my mother, and my sister in two years. So I got to spend a lot of time with them, and it was it was a good trip, I would say. I got to spend more time talking with my dad, accompanying my mom do her farm business, and just talk the stuff with my sister. She's also an artist, by the way, so go check out her work. So the experience was kind of surreal coming back to the Philippines because compared to here in Los Angeles, they were pretty strict about their procedure about how they dealt with the pandemic. So by the time I arrived, the the country was already in alert level three and I had to stay in a hotel for five days being locked up quarantined and then after those five days I would get tested and then if that was negative then I would spend a few more days at my parents house and because not a lot of places were open I was sure to bring my equipment with me so I could just work at the family house so going out in public or going to all these places you know I wasn't really anxious about that. Now, I was going through some personal stuff, so my productivity lowered because I wasn't in the mood for it. But I also got to do some amazing things like, you know, drink vodka with my dad, experience what my mom goes through for her farm business, and just go on walks and coffee with my sister. And instead of choosing to work all the time, I got to get a bit closer to my family and know them in a different light. But I've also been thinking about certain plans with other Filipino artists about maybe starting a sister production company in the Philippines. And my dad has been really supportive in that, and I'll talk about that some other time. But for now, I'd like to talk about the equipment that I brought with me that allowed me to work and travel. This is sort of a sequel to the video I made a few years ago where I talk about the equipment that I used for traveling. My main goal was to travel light and use equipment that's not too expensive, but still powerful enough to do the work that I need. And also, I don't really travel long term, so I know it's for a certain time period. Therefore, what I use isn't meant to replace my current workstation at home, nor do I need it to complete a whole big project. Luckily, most of my work consists of 2D animation, light compositing, video editing, illustration, drawing, and storyboarding. Now, with that out of the way, I'll talk about my travel workstation. First, let's talk about my computer and my laptop. It's actually still the same from a couple years ago. It is the Asus ZenBook. If I'm still using it, it means it's good for the type of work that I need, especially when I travel around. Now, the reason why I got it is that it's light. It's just about a pound in weight, but it also contains the specs I need to perform my work. Now, just don't expect it to run Crysis. It doesn't really have a great graphics card for that. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM and an Intel i7 8th generation. It's got one terabyte of SSD storage, and its video card is a GeForce GTX 1050 Max-Q. It can run casual games and perform well if the games are set on really low. But gaming isn't the priority here, and if I wanted to play games, I would just play old games like Oblivion, indie games, or low demanding PC games. I honestly like playing my games in super low quality anyways. Anyways, in terms of work, it can run Photoshop, TV Paint, After Effects, and Premiere pretty well. The reason why I got 32GB of RAM is that this amount of RAM is good for Photoshop and data caching, for my projects, for After Effects. And having a processor like the i7 is good for multimedia and multitasking several things at once. So I'll have a video editing program and then I'll also have TV Paint open along with Photoshop. However, I do notice that my computer gets really hot when I'm running too many programs or particular programs. And maybe because I'm using a display tablet and maybe that's also making my computer heat up too while running many different programs. But the key takeaway is I could do Photoshop, I could do Storyboard Pro, I can run TV Paint and I can run Harmony. I haven't tried Blender yet, but I didn't really need to do that. I have all the tools that I need for my work, especially for freelance and full-time work. Meaning I can still stay with my family or go somewhere else while doing work for certain studios. I think around the time that I bought this computer, it was around 1200 US dollars. I think a heavy duty mobile workstation or a gaming laptop with great fans and a great graphics card with juicy storage, RAM and processor might go for nearly about 2000 US dollars or more. I want to talk about the tablet I use. So during my last trip here, I used a 13 inch Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. The first time I got that, I thought it was one of the greatest things ever because it was also a full PC, it can run the programs that I need for work, and I could just go to Starbucks and animate in TV paint. As time went by, I just realized that it wasn't ideal. I just had issues with the device trying to be a PC and also a Wacom tablet, and there were a lot of problems and glitches that were kind of frustrating to deal with. But with a USB-C wire, you can actually connect that with your laptop and then that tablet or that tablet PC becomes just another tablet. 
But the more I worked on it, the more I just didn't like drawing on it. It just didn't feel good. But the other issue I have with it is my experience with airports. You see, I'm carrying three different devices with LCD screens, my laptop, my iPad, and the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. Something about the Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, every time I go through x-rays, they always want to examine the item, recheck it, because something in that makes the officer suspicious. Last October, I actually replaced it with a Wacom 16, a 16 inch one. And so far it's good, it fits in my bag. It hasn't gotten my bag pulled for further inspection and it's simple. Do I have cons about it? Absolutely. The default stands for it suck. I think you can buy a Wacom stand separately, but you know what? I just used a book reader that my sister uses, a stand that's pretty good. But it does take a few ports, like my HDMI port and my USB 3.0 port on my laptop. So there's a lot of wires already. Now let's talk about accessories. I actually brought my tour box with me. I didn't really think that I needed it until I did a video review on it, and it just became essential to my animation workflow. I've done a video or two about this thing, and it has made my approach to animation a little more tangible or maybe analog feeling, and it's great. Now, I didn't bring my microphone for the trip. I brought my gaming headset with a mic, and I thought about doing a video in this quality, but I just wasn't in the mood to make YouTube videos during my trip, and hearing the sound quality in this microphone didn't really motivate me either. My other accessories include two USB hubs. The USB on the left connects to my tour box, my TV paint dongle so I can use my TV paint programs, my projects SSD, and my gaming mouse. Whereas my other USB-C, it connects to another SSD drive and some other important stuff. So yeah, this setup has a lot of wires, especially when we talk about the extension cord. I have an extension outlet for three different power adapters, one for my laptop, one for the Wacom, one for the Wacom Cintiq 16, and one for Apple products so I can charge my iPhone and iPad. And if you look at the workstation or setup as a whole, even though it's meant for traveling, it's not something that I can bring around everywhere casually and sit in a cafe and just draw. Absolutely not. I mean, I could, but carrying all the stuff in my backpack isn't ideal for me, and I doubt it's a good look to be carrying an extension cord around a cafe anyways. It's a workstation for traveling. That's about it. It's not really portable enough to work everywhere. So when I do go out to draw, or when I want to just travel and sit in a cafe, I just use an iPad that I got back in 2018. I just use it as a digital sketchbook, not for any serious production. For apps, I use Procreate and Fresco for drawing and illustration, and Rough Animator for rough animation. I've dabbled into many different animation apps such as Flipclip, Calipeg, Digicel Flipbook, and I've also tried the animation features in Procreate and Fresco. I find myself going back to Rough Animator because it's simple and straightforward. If you guys want me to do a video on my thoughts on animation apps on the iPad, just let me know in the comments down below. But like I said, I use it as a casual sketchbook because I'm not really a fan of making finished looking work on the iPad anyways. I haven't really remembered all the Procreate finger guns and gestures, so I keep it simple. Now before I wrap up this video, I want to talk about the things I love and I don't like about this setup that I have right now. And first, I want to talk about the things I do love about it. The laptop is still the same. It's still the same one that I used since 2019. It's fast, it's light and thin. I don't do anything heavy duty when I travel anyways and I intend to keep it that way. I only do light tasks like drawing, 2D animation, and light storyboarding. Not so much for full video compositing, full production or dealing with really big file sizes. In fact, I can still do my job and work remotely as a full-time and freelance artist anywhere with the setup. It's probably not ideal for making fully complex projects, but I can still make stuff with it. Having an iPad is awesome for doing a sketch and immediately saving it on a cloud and no need to scan my drawings. It's all just digital already. Now I wanna talk about the things that I don't like or the things that I would replace or readjust. Even though this trip even though this has been good for my trips, it is a traveling part which makes me not so excited when I bring the stuff around. Remember, I'm carrying at least three LCD screen devices in my backpack, the iPad, my laptop, and a tablet or Cintiq. It gets crowded in my bag, and going through TSA screenings at airports is time consuming. Whenever I leave the Philippines, it's required to put these things in your backpack or carry on, so I'm carrying a lot of stuff on my back. And again, for TSA screenings, I have to pull each device out independently, put three different computers in three different trays during the x-ray, while I put my wallet, my other bag, my shoes, my belt, etc. It's still a hassle, especially when the airport you go to has multiple of those when you go through immigration, a gate, etc. 
Also, my current setup can look my workstation look like a mess on a desk, and maybe that's just my bad wiring or organization skills, but I know I need a lot of desk space to set up. I've actually thought about replacing my whole setup with a Surface Book or Surface Pro, you know, an all-in-one PC tablet, but after my last experience with, you know, Mobile Studio Pro, I just don't really trust all-in-one PC tablets, and I've already adjusted my Asus Zen Book to have the settings I need, the software that I need, and the whole setup is already there. Now for the Wacom display tablet that I'm using, which is the Wacom 16, I think it's great. I think it's a good product overall, but I think these dinky little nubs that just elevate it ever so slightly as a stand is not that great. You know, my sister let me borrow a reading stand for it, which actually has been great on the Wacom. So now I can prop it up to an angle that's more, you know, vertical or facing me. Now, in terms of the brand, I could have considered looking into Huion or an XP Pen, especially for traveling because I've seen their device, it's light, it can still do the job. So I might have just considered getting those instead of the Wacom 16 because the Wacom 16 is quite pricey compared to something similar from Huion or XP Pen that's much cheaper in price. I chose Wacom because I trusted the brand, but if you're looking to save your bucks, I would consider another brand, honestly. As for the iPad, I learned that it's good to keep traditional medium around like a sketchbook with actual papers and pencil because when I'm in drawing jabs and sessions at cafe, my iPad would just run out of battery. And if that didn't run out of battery, my Apple Pencil did. So I really need to get back into the sketchbook game. So let's conclude this. This is my current travel setup. It's not the most powerful thing and it's not really anything different from my last animation production on the go. I just replaced a few stuff here and there because you know it's efficient and it still works and it still does the job aside from having a lot of usb hubs wires and everything even though it still looks like a wire mess everything still works fine if you guys want a more downsized workstation i would consider looking into something like a surface book pro or maybe a tablet all-in-one pc or you could go the opposite direction get a beefy mobile workstation and the only time I'll do something like that is if my powerful mobile workstation replaces my main workstation at home. Because when I travel, I don't do anything that's too intensive. I don't do a lot of 3D, I don't do Blender, I don't do a lot of like computation and all that crap. And my trips aren't long term, but let's say my trips are long term and if I decide to stay with the family for almost 6 months for example, then I would consider getting a beefy mobile workstation. That's something that I would actually consider because of that. If you're just doing 2D animation, storyboarding, illustration, and mid-range video editing compositing, you don't really need a beefy computer or a beefy video card. A good CPU is important, great RAM is good, I think 16 gigabytes of RAM should be a good minimum, but that's because I mostly just do 2D when I'm traveling. And one thing I'd like you guys to think about when you're traveling is, is it a short-term trip? So for example, I'm working on a project and when I travel, I'm only working in the animation and cleanup stage. So I knew that when I got my equipment for traveling, it was just based off necessity. Anyways, that's all, bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.